CataractCoach.com, traumatic xylopathy and medriasis. Remove the cataract, secure the capsule bag, and do a pupiloplasty. Let's watch this very tough case. Now look at the top of your screen there. You've got at least three, four o'clock hours of xylopathy loss. Surgeon's going in here, making a couple extra pairs of TCs. Looks like going to start a rexus here. And once you get that rexus going, you need to get some hooks in here. Now, here comes some iris hooks, which are okay to hold the rexus temporarily, but probably a better option would be capsule hooks. And you'll see the surgeon is going to put one in, and those are going to be a little different. Now, here's completing the rexus. The rexus, of course, is very important in this case. Here comes a capsule tension ring being placed in the capsule bag. That's going to help a lot. So get that CTR placed in the capsule, uh, in capsule bag. Here we go, rotating the nucleus. There's the hook for the capsule. See the difference? It's much longer. The shape is different, and the tip has a nice, smooth, kind of bulbous tip on it. That's going to support all the way out at the lens equator. Now, certainly here is doing a nice chop technique here. Get this nucleus removed. Yes, obviously the video sped up. We're going to get to the good parts, right? Nucleus removal comes out nice and easy. There it is. And now let's take a look. We're going to do cortex removal. I like a bimanual approach here. Here the surgeon's actually getting a capsule tension segment ready. So passing a suture through there, probably a 10-0 polypropylene, 9-0 polypropylene maybe. Placing this inside the eye, there's that capsule tension segment. And there we go. You can also temporarily hold the capsule tension segment with an iris hook, by the way, through the eyelid temporarily. Now at the end here, you got to pass the suture through the sclera here. I like the idea of a groove here so that you have the suture sitting in that groove. Here is a hollowbore needle to lead it out. There's that 10 polypropylene, and you can pass the other end as well. So you've got double-ended. Tie that up. And now what's the... Wow, the surgeon's doing a posterior rexus. Now, this is brave. I would have just put the lens in and done a YAG capsule out of me later. But yeah, a posterior rexus too. Woo, very nicely done here. And now let's see what we can do for the lens. A little more viscoelastic is a good idea. Here comes the lens. Looks like a single piece of acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Now, be careful. Get both haptics and the optic above the posterior rexus and behind the anterior capsular rexus. There we go, nicely done. Now, suture being tied. That's that 10 polypropylene to secure the capsular tension segment and then bury that knot. I like that it's in that groove because then the suture is kind of protected. And then triumphs in lung, making sure there's no vitreous prolapse. Wow. Now, if you need to do a vitrectomy, remember, retinorals.com. We'll teach you how to do it the right way. That's our Reddit channel. You better check it out. Now, going back to our case here, Cleaning everything up, it looks pretty good. Maybe a little viscoelastic going in the outside of the AC because we got to bring down the iris. This patient has also a chronic traumatic midriasis. So bringing down the pupil here. And it looks like the surgeon's going to do a cerclage technique. This is not so simple. This is a tougher technique. The standard four thorough pupiloplast that we learned from Amar Agarwal is probably an easier technique. But a cerclage works beautifully. So now doing about 90 degrees of the pupil margin here. Externalizing the needle. And now what? Turn the needle right back around, go back inside. And now you've got a different orientation for another 90 degrees or so. Most surgeons do this with four passes total. So 90 degrees times four is the 360. Some do it with three passes. So 120 degrees at a time for three passes. Again, the 360. And now finishing it up here, looks like the surgeon is going to do the a double-ended 10 polypropylene here for the pupiloplasty. And then bringing both ends out through the main phaco incision. And then just tie it down. Now, make sure the pupil's not too tiny here. You don't want some baby pupil unless you don't want to examine the red anymore. So I think a good size pupil is probably three and a half, maybe four millimeters, because this is obviously never going to dilate again. You want a good-looking pupil at conversation distance. Bring that down. That's about good for me. I would leave it right about there, not too much smaller. Okay, you may a little bit smaller. Now, you, you may still be able to examine the retinal periphery, some wide-angle imaging devices, but not going to be easy. So the smaller the pupil is, the tougher it's going to be to see that retinal periphery. And you know you need your help of your retina colleagues. So here we go. Tying up that suture. Cutting the ends a little bit on the long side. And look at that. A beautiful result here. The patient's going to be so happy. This is, a, this is a beautiful case. By the way, this case will probably take you about one hour. The video sped up. It is not a five-minute surgery. It is a one-hour surgery, even in the best of hands, maybe 45 minutes. But beautiful result. Thank you for sharing this video. I loved it. It was great. Remember, check out retinarounds.com, our sister channel, youtube.com slash at retinarounds. And also sign up for the free daily email because I already know you're already signing up for the cataractcoach.com daily email, right? I mean, don't break my heart here.